there you guys. Today I'm going to try a new way of washing my brushes. Everyone has a different way of doing it. Everyone's way is the best. So up until now, I have been using a light soap or a dishwashing soap. Dawn is the best grease cutter I found if I have, you know, really icky things, um, you know, like eyeliner or perhaps wax-based foundations. You know, you look at this brush, this does not this is gonna be a difficult one to clean that I've used with a wax-based foundation. Um, if you really need to sanitize your brushes afterwards, a quick dip in some rubbing alcohol is um, a great way to make sure that they're ultra clean and sanitized. When makeup artists are on location and they're going through model after model, they need to make sure that their brushes are sanitized. They will often dip them in some alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is great. Um, you can use anything really between 70 and 99. I think a mix between the two is ideal. There's some argument that 99 evaporates so quickly that it doesn't really kill the germs and maybe 70 isn't enough, but really I, I think a mix between the two is, is probably your most ideal bet. Um, this stuff is super cheap. You just pick it up at the pharmacy, um, you know, Walmart, Target, that kind of place. I ordered some Hakuhoto brushes recently and these are absolutely incredible. Um, the, the hairs are not cut. This is the actual tip of the hair, which makes it unbelievably soft. They are incredible. They are an investment, and I want to make sure that I treat these brushes as delicate little babies. I want to make sure that I'm not doing anything that's going to harm them. Hakuhodo recommends using a microfiber cloth when you're using powders, which really um, dusts off all the powders from your brush and you don't need to wash them as much. You can actually just knock the powder off and they will come quite clean. So just using a simple microfiber cloth for something like that is not something I'd done before. So um, that was a really great thing to learn about, but they just suggested very, very, very delicate soaps and shampoos. You never, ever, ever use hot water on any of your brushes, even brushes that are synthetic, because what happens with hot water is this area of the brush here is called the ferrule, and there is glue inside of this ferrule. And if you're using extremely hot water on a natural hair brush, extremely hot water is not good, just like it's not good for your own hair. Um, but it will actually loosen this glue because it will soften it and you're going to start losing hairs much sooner and lessen the life of your brush. So always wash in lukewarm water. Now, when you have a synthetic brush like this, you can really go to town with it. Um, however, when you're using natural haired brushes, you have to think of this as the hair that it is. So. When you're washing your own hair in the bath, you're going to notice that a lot of your shampoos say things like pH balanced, and that is because your skin and your hair has a natural pH. You want to stay around the natural pH that is best for the hair of this brush. Now this is, but a goat haired brush is not going to necessarily have the same pH as your regular hair. So someone whom I read a lot of their articles, they're absolutely amazing, went overseas and went to the brush makers and discussed this very thing with them and what would be the best. Now she suggests using something called Savon de Marseille. Savon de Marseille. I'm really having a hard time saying that. It's of course very French. So a traditional French soap, and it has, um, I believe, at least 75% uh, palm or 75% olive oil, and they are given a specific stamp um, that says that it was made in France and was made with this traditional method. There is absolutely no alcohol and things like that of that nature. Um, this is actually a United States made French style Savon de Marseille soap, and I bought this at my local health food store. This is called South of France Natural Body Care, and this is their shea butter. I wish you could smell this soap. It's incredible. The smell of this soap is absolutely incredible. And the reason that we are using soaps like this is, first of all, if you just feel this soap, it feels unbelievable. The pH balance of this soap is what it should be for the hair of your brushes, and 
Actually, these are really very inexpensive. You can get one of these bars of soap for maybe five, six, seven dollars, and this will last you forever. Even if you're watching, washing huge amounts of brushes like this, this soap is still gonna last you a very, very, very long time. A lot of people will condition their brushes with something like olive oil or hair conditioner. That's great in theory because you're adding a softness back into the brush. However, the problem with conditioning your brushes with something like that is it leaves an awful residue on the brush. And I tried doing this, especially if you're picking up powder. A powder brush does not want to pick up powder when it has a coating of olive oil or hair conditioner. And when you go to blend things out, it does not do its job properly because you have hairs all over this brush that just aren't working. So that is not something that I suggest. So what this wonderful gal has suggested to do is exactly what I'm gonna show you here. So we're gonna use lukewarm water, and if you guys can see spots and uncleanliness in my kitchen sink, go ahead and judge me. I'll give you a moment. You about done? Okay, good. We're gonna use tepid water. It should just be warm, not hot. Try to always wash your brushes in this direction because that way you're not getting water up inside this ferrule portion of the brush. You're gonna keep all the water dripping down off the head. So holding the brush in a downward angle, I'm going to wet it and I'm just gonna tap it around to make sure that the hairs are thoroughly saturated. Now I'm going to take it and I'm just going to dab it and wipe it around a little bit on my bar of soap. And already, there's it looks like chocolate milk over here. There's tons of eyeshadow coming out. Now that there's plenty of soap on my brush, I'm just going to start working it around in my hand, back and forth, and in circular motions. Sort of the same types of things you would do if you were blending, back and forth, and in circular motions. I'm not shoving down or pressing down on this brush. I'm just gently working the tip and the soap is definitely going to work up in there. I can see already that the hair is extremely white compared to what it was. Now I'm gonna go ahead and with the brush still in the downward motion, I'm going to rinse it off. And I'm also going to be using a little bit of this motion just to make sure that I've really gotten all the soap out. Go ahead and sort of really feel the brush with your fingertips, squeeze it a little bit, and you can feel if there's either soap on there or if it's oily or grimy. You'll know the difference. This is why, as, as much as I hate how dry my hands are after I wash all these brushes, and I'd rather wear gloves. If I don't wear gloves, I can really, really feel the condition of the tips. Now I'm just going to take a kitchen towel and I'm going to gently squeeze the bristles of the brush. Don't rub, just squeeze. And now I have a beautifully clean white Hakuhoto blending brush laid out on the towel. He's gonna go ahead and dry. Washing your brushes in olive oil for me is a big fail. I didn't use this brush since the last time I washed it, so I just picked it up to see how it would wash in that soap. And when I picked it up and got it wet, there's still olive oil residue in this brush. That's just disgusting. And that's gonna come out in your foundation. That's gonna help your foundation not set properly and not adhere properly and be streaky just really a gigantic mess uh, and I can't tell you how long I wash and rinse this brush after I put the olive oil in it and the fact that it is still on this brush is is um, it really bothers me because that that to me is just gross and this brush would have been completely unusable had I tried to use it and a lot of times I think people will pick up their brush and, and put their foundation on and they will say, oh, there's such a problem with this foundation. Maybe I got a bad bottle. It broke me out. It's streaky. It moved off of my face after 20 minutes of wearing it. Well, 
I, I think that you should really take a hard look at how you've been cleaning your brushes because a lot of these overly conditioning brush cleaning methods will, um, will leave a nasty residue on your brush that will then be transferred to your face. So it may not have been the foundation that you were having a problem with. It easily could have been uh, the residue covered brush that you were using to try and apply your foundation. So food for thought, something to think about. Now that I have used my Savon de Marseille soap, this brush feels nice and squeaky clean and I can feel very confident about using it on my foundation. Now, why don't I do this and stand all my brushes after they're clean up into a bin like this? The reason is the same as why we don't run water directly into the ferrule of the brush. Because when you have a wet brush and you stand it up like this to dry, all that water is going to be running down into the ferrule and loosening the glue over time. So, kids, <laughs> the best way to clean your makeup brushes is this method right here. To use a Savon de Marseille soap, which is going to be very high concentration of naturally conditioning fats, palm oil, shea butter, olive oil, that are going to leave your hair squeaky clean, yet super soft, and not leave a residue on your brushes. And if you use this method to clean your brushes, they will be clean and wonderful companions for your makeup career for many years to come. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, please let me know.